Data Lake and Lake House are highly discussed topic at the moment, and this is because it's much easier and cost effective to have a central storage in an object storage and be free of which compute engine you want to use against it. But many people forget an important part of the story, the data catalog. Over the past few years, it has become more important. But what is a catalog anyway? In this video, we'll cover definitions and review some basics around data lake and lake house to understand why data catalog have gained a central component. And finally, we end up with some code around the DuckDB use case as a portable catalog. So let's dive into it. Drawing inspiration from a great blog from Jeremia Hansen, Catalog can be break down into two main categories. Data governance catalogs, these are informational and help for the centrally defined governance policies across different databases and searchable metadata. And the other one is database object catalog. This one is operational and is used directly by data platforms and query engine to read and write data and is also often referred as Metasore. While informational catalogs can be used for operational purposes, these definitions clarify how they relate to the databases or query engines. So an operational catalog is used directly by the engine to query data, whereas an informational catalog is accessed by people for documentation and dataset discovery. Sometimes the distinction between the two categories can blur and features from one may appear in the other, but that's roughly the two categories of catalog that you can find. In this video, we'll focus about database object catalog. If this sounds too confusing, don't worry, we'll get into an example of how this works just a bit later. So why are catalog essential for future data platforms? Well, in the past, data system combined storage, computing, and the catalog. It was just a built-in feature. For example, if you were using Oracle for your analytics, you couldn't switch a different compute engine. The storage, the compute, and the catalog were all fixed together. Since the time of Hadoop, we've began to separate storage and computing, and the Hive Metastore was the first open catalog to emerge from this change. And with strategies like Data Lake and Lake House, we've leaned into open file formats like Parquet and Avro, and more recently, table formats like Delta Lake, Iceberg, and Hoodie. So these new formats introduce features like AC properties and others, including schema evolution and deletes. If you are confused between the difference between Data Lake versus Lake House, to put it simply, a data lake is a centralized storage solution that holds the raw data in its original format, would it be CSV, Parquet, JSON, and is still leveraging the classic object storage like USS3. And a lake house builds on top of this and adding table formats like Delta Lake and Iceberg, enabling AC transaction and schema management while still using plain old object storage. So as we separate storage from computing, we need a common and open place to manage our table states and our data lake. Let's go over a simple example to understand why having a catalog is so important. So when using a Parquet data lake, managing the catalog was relatively straightforward. Since Parquet files are immutable, meaning they cannot be changed, you simply scan all the Parquet files needed to represent a table. And given the following files over an object storage, the contents of my table would be the total of the data from the Parquet file, file1.parquet and file2.parquet. If there were updates or deletion to the data, new Parquet file would replace the old ones. And all we have to do is to scan them again. From the computer giant, the task is relatively simple. Just read all the Parquet files. And for that, you have two options. Through a catalog interaction, interact with the catalog, which organize all the data so that you don't need to worry about the file locations or you directly scan through the object storage. So that you can scan the Parquet file using the base path location. And also most of this engine understand Hive partitioning too. So then table formats like Delta Lake and Apache Iceberg came into the picture. And unlike basic Parquet file, they support operations like update and delete. This format are also designed to reduce the amounts of computing 
needed when accessing the stored data. We'll come into that. So here is how they work. These table formats are still based on parquet file, but they include additional metadata files. So let's say we make an update or delete, and instead of having to rewrite an entire parquet file, the query engine simply adds a line to a metadata file, usually in JSON format. So here is what a Delta Lake folder might look like, for instance. You have the Delta log, which contains the metadata as JSON files, and then you have the actual data still in Parquet. But here it's where it gets a bit complex compared to Vanilla Parquet. If you just scan the data from file1.parquet and file2.parquet after an update or a delete transaction, you may not see in the tables is current correct states. This update or delete operation may have occurred and the information about this operation is stored into the metadata JSON files without changing the actual parquet files. And because of this, our query engine must use the catalog to understand the correct current states of the table. Catalog has become essential when working with this advanced table format. Another way would be to have the query engine decode these metadata files and represent the correct view. However, this patch the complexity back to the query engine, so meh. So let's talk about DuckDB now. So DuckDB has its own file format. It's storage efficient and it supports ACID transaction. It's one file that contains all tables, data, and metadata. And so as DuckDB can interact with many databases like Postgres, MySQL, and file format, Parquet, CSV, Delta Lake, Apache Iceberg, would it be local or over an object storage, Elubias S3, Azure Blob Storage, etc. It's therefore a great candidate for a portable catalog. Working with data, especially when doing data wrangling or one-shot analysis, can be a messy journey. Anyone working in data has probably experienced this at least once in their life. So how to avoid this? Well, you could actually share one file that contains all metadata information ready to be queried with DuckDB, but without the actual data itself. Plus, the file is super light. So let's get our hands dirty and start to code. I just opened VS Code. I'm going to launch a shell using the DuckDB CLI. You can watch down for more information about how to set up the DuckDB CLI if you want to follow along. But basically, all the comments I'm going to do here are available no matter which client of DuckDB you're going to use, would it be Python, R, or whatever it's your job. I'll also share a GitHub gist with all the playground queries I'm using there if you want to copy paste and play around. So I'll start here with uh, an attach command which is going to attach a public uh, DuckDB uh, database. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm, I'll show you all the tables included. So you see that in the Ducky catalog database, we have four tables. And uh, basically, we can start querying those table. And that's pretty much it. There is four tables. So what is exceptional? Well, I have actually uh, the file uh, locally uh, downloaded. And it's about the size of... 268 kilobytes. So what is happening over there? Well, as you may guess in our introduction, this DuckDB file includes all metadata, but no data at all. And we do this through the process of views. So I can still query as it is regular table, and I'm gonna show you actually the definition of those views. So I'm using a table function which contain metadata about uh, the views. Let me actually uh, change the, the mode line pretty quickly so that we can see the full line. And so you see here that we're basically creating a, the hair quality view is based on a parquet file on S3. We have uh, the customers, which is a folder containing multiple CSV on S3. We have the, a table from a Postgres database here, which is actually coming from a Neon uh, hosted database. And then we have finally a nice work table store on Google Cloud Storage. So this is really pretty extreme and mostly for the sake of demo. But with just one simple small file, I can attach a lot of data sets together. Now let's talk about how you manage access to those data sets. So there is no secret store in this file, and that's the good thing because we want to rely on user authentication mechanism to make sure that this user has access to the data actually. So in our example, when I show you how to query customers, this is actually from a public bucket. But if you query a private bucket, 
The only thing you need is to leverage a DuckDB secrets manager and you can create a secrets based on the DBS key or directly based on SSO mechanism. So that would assume that you first authenticate using the AWS CLI. So typically you do AWS SSO login and then your profile name and you're gonna log in, it's gonna generate your credential and then within DuckDB, you create a secrets that will fetch those credentials. So you can do similar thing for a Google Cloud Storage and for Postgres, you can also use the secret manager. But the only thing here is that we are just linking one table and the secrets manager works at the database level at this point of this video. So a neat trick that you can also use for other things is to basically create a view with the Postgres scan function and you see here that I'm using an environment variable. This basically is gonna fetch my local PG database, PG OS, and etc. So roughly the only thing you need to do uh, within your current environment is to you know, make those uh, global environment available. Either you do an export or if it's within a CI or whatsoever, you make them available over there. And to create the view, you see, uh, let me put it over here that it's a bit more readable. I'm simply piping a text, you know, field to the get M function to use the environment variable. Know that you can also do that when you have, you know, development or production database and you don't want to hardcore within your query, your database name. That's also a neat trick to use the get M function. All right, so now basically we have this Ducky catalog database which is super light. And how can we share actually a common catalog with other users? Well, we did have put it on, you know, an object storage, but how do you manage permission to this one, concurrent rights? And this is where a single binary file has its limits. And Mother Duck supercharged JackDB in the cloud. And there is this Mother Duck share features where you can create a database and give an access to a link to the authorized people. So let me show you here how you can upload a local DuckDB instance to ModderDuck pretty quickly. So the only thing you need is actually a ModderDuck token. And for that, you can sign up to ModderDuck.com, go in the UI and generate your token. So in then you make this ModderDuck token as an environment viable available here. So export ModderDuck token equal the value of your ModderDuck token. Another way to do this, if you have a Mother Duck account, is just to follow the authentication a Webflow sign up. So if there isn't any Mother Duck token environment viable present, the CLI will pop up a link. You follow up that up, you authenticate, and it's going to populate a token for you. So once you have the authentication set up, the only thing you need to do is do another attach command with the attach md colon. And because my mother duck token is already uh, populated as an environment variable, that's it. Now I'm connected to basically a uh, mother duck. If, even if I do show database again, you see, I have plenty of databases. Don't judge me. It's a bit messy available in the cloud. So if I run a query against uh, those cloud database, now I'm leveraging not only the storage of mother duck, but also uh, the compute of mother duck and the duck DB CLI is acting as a client. So to coming back, what I want to do here is that I have this uh, Ducky catalog here, which is my local uh, DuckDB database, and I want to create a cloud uh, Ducky catalog. You see, I've done it already, so I'll put it just a, a, a third time. So how to do this? Again, it's really simple. I just do a create database, a cloud Ducky catalog, and let me suffix it with three uh, from the local DuckDB database that I want to upload. And that's it, it's done. And as you can see, this was super fast because it's just, again, metadata. So it's just uploading 268 kilobytes and my cloud database is there. So now you can explore the tables over there and you can query using modern cloud, which is pretty nice, especially if you have tables hosted on S3, you leverage the network cloud interaction between modern and for example, AWS S3, versus your local DuckDB, your internet connection, and the cloud AWS S3, let's say. And let me sh just quickly show you the Mother Duck UI for a sec. You see that we have uh, the cloud Ducky catalog here, and I have 
and you can explore uh, basically the different uh, table schema. And so this one is hosted on S3. This one is also hosted on S3, so that's the CSV. This one is a table on Postgres, and this iceberg table is actually hosted on Google Cloud Storage. Finally, not only you can leverage your cloud compute, but you can start easily to share database with other people. So here I'm gonna create a share based on the Cloud Ducky catalog tree because that's our database. I'm gonna put it public so anyone with the link. You can also restrict it within our organization. An update automatic, meaning that if I update this share with new tables, for example, the user that have attached this share uh, basically uh, can see the update directly. So this is it, I create the create share command and you see I have a share variable which is backup and any other user basically just need to do dash and a this share to be able to start query this database. So in short with this example, we saw how to share one database that spawns data set across multiple cloud providers, even a Postgres database can also be a MySQL database. We saw how easy it is to push it to the cloud and they're leveraging the cloud network bandwidth and also manage access with shares so that we manage updates safely. So what's next? Well, we saw that DuckDB's capabilities continue to grow, including experimental support for other catalogs like Unity Catalog, and there is also an exciting GitHub discussion that explores DuckDB as a meta catalog concept where DuckDB could host child catalogs. And there is also other discussion about potential features including materialized view, a more flexible refresh mechanism for views, similar to external tables in other systems. So can DuckDB be the best open portable catalog? Well, we've seen it as serious potential as of today. And for the rest, we have an exciting future ahead full of possibilities. In the meantime, keep quacking and keep coding. I'll see you in the next one.